Well, good morning and welcome. This is Morning Mail for Thursday, April the 21st, 2022. Great to be with you this morning. Hope that your day is starting well. Good that you, glad that you were able to take time if you're live with me and, and uh, join in at this time and whatever time you may be watching this, this morning mail session. We're going to start with prayer, and then we'll get right back into Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Loving Father, thank you for the day and its blessings for the past night's rest, for your being with us and watching over us through the night. Help us this day as we seek to go about our activities, that we might seek to honor and glorify you, to say a, a good word to, for Jesus to those that we come in contact with. Father, our world so desperately, desperately needs to hear about Jesus and your love and grace seen in his sacrifice. Help us to do what we can, each one of us individually, congregations collectively, that we might reach out and touch those who are in need so badly of the gospel of Christ. Continue to be with our country, the situations that we're facing here, continue to be with Ukraine, the situation's there as it seems that they've taken another dire turn and uh, we just are, are mindful of those uh, Ukrainians and especially our, our Christian brothers and sisters in, in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass region and down in Mariupol and, and uh, Crimea, those really, really hot spots in this, this war that's going on. I pray pray that this can all be over soon. Be with us now in our time this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to open your word together. Help us as we seek to, to know more of you through your word. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of his charge to all Christians regarding the battle in which we are engaged with the devil, Paul mentioned one other vital resource that God gives to his people. Take your Bible, if you would, and turn with me to Ephesians 6, and I want us to read verses 18, 19, and 20. Paul writes, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul said that God gives us prayer for the fight. Why? Well, that's because putting on God's armor requires prayer. Prayer expresses our dependence on God. A failure to pray says, I do not need God. I can do well without Him. I can make it on my own. Now, folks, that attitude guarantees spiritual defeat. None of us can win the fight with the devil on our own. Prayer keeps us focused on God. Notice in verse 18 <clears throat> the alls of Paul's instruction regarding prayer. His words draw attention to the comprehensiveness of prayer in our lives as Christians, as he has four uses of the word all, A-L-L. <clears throat> he says, number one, we are to pray at all times. To battle against the devil, 
and walk away standing, we must make prayer a daily discipline. Two, we are to pray all kinds of prayers and requests. We need variety in our communication with God according to what is going on in our lives. The situation might call for confession, thanksgiving, intercession, adoration, praise, song, or some other type of prayer. Three, we are to pray alertly, always. While Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, the disciples slept. That's the tendency of people. We sleep or, or, or lose our sense of urgency at the time when we should be praying. Four, we are to pray for all Christians. God wants us to see that we need to work together in our fight against Satan. A, a united family of God that prays for one another can stand strong against Satan's attacks. You know, to be honest with you, over the years, I have struggled to discipline myself to pray as I should. And other Christians have shared with me their own struggles and failures to pray. Well, why do we fall short in that when it comes to prayer? I suppose we could think of several reasons. But let's look at what John Piper mentioned in his book, Desiring God, as quoted by R. Kent Hughes in his book, Ephesians, The Mystery of the Body of Christ, page 257 to 258. Piper wrote, quote, Unless I'm badly mistaken, one of the main reasons so many of God's children don't have a significant life of prayer is not so much that we don't want it, or don't want to, but that we don't plan to. If you want to take a four-week vacation, you don't just get up one summer morning and say, hey, let's go today. You don't have anything ready. You won't know where to go. Nothing has been planned. But that is how many of us treat prayer. We get up day after day and realize that significant times of prayer should be part of our lives. But nothing is ever ready. We don't know where to go. Nothing has been planned. No place, no time, no procedure. And we all know that the opposite of planning is not a wonderful flow of deep, spontaneous experiences in prayer. The opposite of planning is the rut. If you don't plan a vacation, you will probably stay home and watch TV. The natural, unplanned flow of spiritual life sinks to the lowest ebb of vitality. There is a race to be run and a fight to be fought. If you want renewal in your life of prayer, you must plan to see it. Now, Piper goes on to say, Therefore, my simple exhortation is this. Let us take time this very day to rethink our priorities and how prayer fits in. Make some new resolve. Try some new 
venture with God. Set a time. Set a place. Choose a portion of scripture to guide you. Don't be tantalized by the press of busy days. We all need mid-course corrections. Make this a day of turning to prayer for the glory of God and for the fullness of your joy. End of quote. Again, that was John Piper in his book, Desiring God, as quoted by R. Kent Hughes in his book, Ephesians, the mystery of the body of Christ. So let's ask this question. What actions will you take to fight against the devil? What will you do to defend your family when they come under spiritual attack? How can you help your fellow Christians to win this fight to the finish? against the powers of darkness? Well, folks, your answer can be found in the words of the Apostle Paul in our text for today. Now, we're a little shorter today, but as we close, I want to go back and reread verses 13 through 18. But I want to read this time, not from the New American Standard, which I normally read from. I want to read from a translation called The Message. In that translation, Ephesians 6, verses 13 through 18, reads this way, quote, Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Rake all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that it's all over but the shouting, or when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray to keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. End of quote. Again, that was from the message, and I, uh, I need to correct something I just said earlier. It's not a translation. It is a paraphrase, okay? So that's why it sounds a little different or quite different in many ways than what we normally read. Well, again, as I said, I'm a, we're a little shorter today, but uh, I wanted to cover those verses. And tomorrow we're going to conclude this week's morning mail as we conclude our survey of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians as well. We're going to be looking at verses 21 to 24 of Ephesians 6 where Paul closes in a manner typical of his letters. Hope you can be with me tomorrow for that. Let's bow in prayer as we close for today. Gracious Father, we thank you for the avenue of prayer. So often we take it for granted. So much so that we enter into prayer without thinking, reflecting, and planning. We enter into prayer, or we fail rather sometimes to enter into prayer because we don't think about it. Father, help us to realize that that's just trying to depend upon self and not you. And we must we must depend upon you to be successful in this battle, spiritual battle against Satan. Help us, Father, to grow in our prayer, to deliberately choose and plan 
times and ways in which we come before you and address you. All that's not to say there's not time for spontaneous and, and unplanned prayer, but it needs to be deeper and more than that if we're going to win the battle. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the armor. Thank you for the knowledge you give to us of our enemy so that we can be prepared. And by your grace, stand before Satan. Thank you for Jesus that makes it all possible. In his name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope your Thursday is a great one, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for another session of Morning Mail.